What's going on guys, Tyler here, and today's video is very, very important, but it is going to be a little bit different and stray a little bit from my typical videos that I put out. This video is going to be about helping you diagnose any kind of issues or problems that you're having on your website and kind of how to resolve those. Now, every single website is different and every single website is going to be unique with what plugins you're using, what themes you're using, what builders you're using, everything like that. So it's hard to kind of diagnose and generally give you solutions for very, very specific problems. And sometimes problems that no one else is facing out of every other person that's using WordPress to build their website. Now, I want to give you a guide to kind of how I diagnose, identify, and solve problems on my website. Like I said, guys, my name is Tyler. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, be sure and smash that nice red look and subscribe button. Join the family and see videos just like this in the future. Now, if you are interested in developing a WordPress website in a very easy fashion, I teach on my channel all about how to drag and drop build a website using a plugin called Elementor. Elementor has a free version as well as a pro version, and the pro version has so many features at a very low price. So if you're interested in upgrading to Elementor Pro at any time, be sure and check out the links down below in the description. Now with no further ado, let's jump into how to diagnose and problem solve on your WordPress website. All right, guys, like you probably already know, I live and breathe and teach how to build WordPress websites with this drag and drop page builder called Elementor. Now, most of the viewers here are probably going to have seen my videos about how to drag and drop and build a website using Elementor. However, Elementor has many different versions. WordPress has many different versions. Many of you are using many different browsers. There are so many different variations that occasionally things don't click and you run into some kind of issue. That happens all the time, all across different websites. And I want this video to kind of be a guide to help you quickly diagnose and problem solve. Now, one of the most common issues that I see people facing is having a plugin that doesn't work nicely with other plugins. Elementor is a plugin, Elementor Pro is another plugin, and those two work together really well. However, <laughs> the other plugins like third-party plugins, other kinds of plugins that you're adding to your WordPress website, don't always work and play nicely with other plugins. So that's a huge, huge issue. And many of the issues that I faced in my WordPress website have been a result of plugins not playing nicely together. So let's go ahead and solve that issue. Now, the first thing that you need to know when you're looking to solve website issues is Google is going to be your very best friend. I must say that like 90% of the issues that I've ran into on my website, I've been able to solve through just Google searches and not reading just the top result, but reading, you know, three results, five results, 10 results. Sometimes it takes a lot of results before I actually find a solution that works. But I would say that 90% of those issues I'm able to solve with Google. And that's not just for website development, that's for wanting to learn something, wanting to figure out how you know things work or running into any kind of various issue outside of just websites. I have found tremendous success using Google and using and finding results and solutions through Google. Now, knowing that, knowing that you should be searching out your problem, just describe it out in your Google search and see what you can find there. Knowing that and pairing it with this solution that I'm going to show you here, hopefully will get you on the right track to finding a solution that will work for your website. And like I said, guys, I love responding to your comments and I will try and help you the very best I can. If you read some of the comments, you know, in some of my other videos where people face issues, I really, really do my research and try and help you guys out because I'm trying to help you out, you know, as a friend to try and make this solution work. But sometimes it's just impossible for me to be able to diagnose it without seeing the issue, without creating the issue, without 
kind of like running into the issue myself. It's just hard. So here's what I would do. I would go over to your WordPress backend. I would go into plugins and I would go ahead and download and install this plugin called Plugin Organizer. If you don't know how to do that, basically you go over here on the left, click plugins, click add new and search for the plugin called Plugin Organizer organizer. Now the logo or the little symbol for this plugin is going to be a little puzzle piece and that's here in August of 2020. So unless they update it, it's going to be a little plugin piece. And if I actually zoom in here, you can see this is, is their little symbol, their little logo. I have it installed here. Now plugin organizer is basically going to allow you to set the order you want your plugins to load in. But more importantly than that, it's going to allow us to disable plugins um, specifically to a single page. Now this is going to be very, very important and crucial to us diagnosing these issues. All right, so once you have Plugin Organizer installed and activated, basically we're gonna go over to our pages here and we're gonna go ahead and start making some edits here to the Plugin Organizer settings. So I'm just gonna go over to a typical page that I use for tutorials, but basically we're not going to edit this with Elementor. We're just going to simply hit edit and this will bring up the WordPress editor. Now this is where you can actually go ahead and actually create an entire page from just a WordPress text document editor basically. Um, but what we're going to do is scroll down and we're going to scroll down to the plugin organizer settings here. Now these organizer settings are specific to the page that you're editing here. These are not global settings across your entire website. These are specific to the page that you're editing here. So if I have an issue on a page, say I have no idea. I mean, there's so many variations of issues that you could be facing, but say I'm having some kind of issues on my form, like, I don't know, the button isn't working or the color's not working or some kind of issue is happening within my form, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is go to the page where the form is. So here we'll just say, for example, it's Elementor number 668. That's the title of this page. We'll just say that this is the page here. What I'm going to do is start disabling plugins. Now, don't worry. It's okay. This is not going to be deleting plugins or canceling or, or losing settings on your plugins. It's basically just going to block the plugin from loading when the page loads. So I'll show you very briefly how this works. There are two settings that you need to take into account right here. This role. This role means when it's not logged in, that means when a user is visiting your website and not logged in as a WordPress user to your website. So this is going to be like 99% of traffic to your website, I'm guessing, unless you use a lot of WordPress user roles and stuff like that. It's probably going to be just about all the traffic to your website. Um, default logged in is going to be when someone is actually logged into your WordPress website. Now this is probably going to be very few people unless you're using your WordPress website as kind of like a, you know, a login, customer login type of stuff. Now, you need to remember though that we are logged into the WordPress website. So we are going to fall under the default logged in. Um, all the other users, all the other traffic are going to fall under the not logged in if they're not logged into your WordPress website. Now, we're gonna go ahead and just simply make some edits to the plugin organizer. This plugin is very simple. It used to be kind of difficult and confusing to use, but they've made it a lot simpler. If it's in green, it's it's activated and it's running. It's going to be running on the web on the page when you load it up. If it's red, it's not going to be activated. It'll be deactivated. If it's gray, it's not even activated at all. Is what I believe that means. Um, basically, it's just not going to be activated in your back end of, of WordPress altogether. So these are all the active ones, these green ones that are going to be loaded when I load up my page. Um, but let me just show you how this works. So basically we can just click on one and it will disable it. We can just go through and click these plugins to disable them, or we can hit disable all, or we can hit enable all. And then all you have to do to actually do that is go ahead and update. So the system that I use is what I'm trying to do is find that problem. I'm trying to find which plugin is causing that problem. That's the whole system here. So basically I have Elementor Pro and Elementor. I know those are not going to be causing the problem because they are the ones I'm designing the form through. So those ones are good. All the other ones, 
I don't know. I'm not sure if or if they're causing the issue. So rather than going through each one and checking, I'm just going to make this very simple on myself. If you know if you have a page builder and you know that's not the issue or if you have, you know, one plugin that that you design this form with and you know that's not the issue, you can save yourself a ton of time and just disable all of them and then re-enable the ones that you know are going to be working. So I created the form with Elementor. I know that's not the issue. I'm going to keep those enabled. I'm going to disable everything else. Again, don't worry. It's not deleting settings on your plugins. It's not deleting your plugins. It's just going to be disabling them from loading when you load up your site. Now, let me show you here what this looks like. So this is for not logged in. So in order to see what this looks like from a not logged in, we're going to need to go into an incognito or a private browser, basically a browser that's not holding our login session. So for me here on Chrome, that's very easy. I click these three little dots and hit new incognito window, or I can use command shift N or control shift N. This is going to bring up an incognito window. And I know you probably wonder like, what the heck is this window if you've never seen it before? But basically it's just going to be not logged into any websites. So if I was logged in here on my regular browser to facebook.com and I pull up an incognito browser, basically I'm just not logged in. I'm just visiting Facebook as if I was never logged in. So that's all it is. And it, it doesn't save any settings. It doesn't save any history. So when you close out of the browser, it erases all of that history and settings and everything. So let's go ahead and just go over to my website and we'll go over to the um, page which I'm editing. All right, so here is the page that I'm editing. This is what it looks like with all my plugins running, with no changes made. This is what it looks like right here. Okay, looks great, perfect. We might have the issue on that page, and so we're gonna go ahead and test it and try and disable plugins and see how this works. So now if we go over here, we have our our um, the plugins that we know are not gonna be causing the issue, for example, our page builders. We're gonna go ahead and leave those enabled, disable everything else, hit update, and we're gonna go back here. Again, that was for not logged in, so we're gonna go back to our incognito browser because we need to see what it looks like um, when we're not logged in. We'll hit refresh, and you can see just about nothing changed. However, the plugins in the background are not being loaded. So I have plugins such as Contact Form 7, which is now not being loaded. And to show you what this is like, I can go ahead and disable Elementor and Elementor Pro, which are my page builders. We'll hit Update, and I'll show you what this is doing. So if we go back to our, oops, that was the wrong incognito browser. If we go back here to our incognito browser and hit Refresh, you can see now the page has changed and that's because it's not loading my page builder plugin. You can see this is kind of like default stuff. This looks like just a blank WordPress website with no plugins on it basically. And this is pretty much what this, this uh, plugin organizer does is it just strips it of anything um, except for what is enabled here. So that is the best way to test and see if you can fix things without um, you know, going through and making big changes or anything like that. This is the quickest way to be able to do that. So now let's say the issue is on contact form seven. I know that's the issue. I can go ahead and re-enable everything else. Again, contact form seven is a great plugin. I don't think that's the issue, but I can go ahead and re-enable everything else. And uh, then I'll hit update and I can actually save this page as just like this. I can actually navigate away. I can be done. That was it. I figured out a solution. Basically, I just am disabling the conflict plugin on this one specific page and that's the issue. If you do find that, you know, that's causing the issue and you need that plugin running, then you have to figure out some other kind of solution. And I'm sorry, I can't really help you much past that point. Um, you got to figure out if you which plugin you're going to run or, or what the issue is there. But I would say this is going to fix a large percentage of people's problems that are running into problems with conflicting plugins. This this happens very frequently, and I wouldn't be surprised, especially if you're using free versions of stuff where you're having to bring in like you know four or five plugins to try and build one you know major thing out um, you're gonna run into those those conflicting plugin issues all the time so I hope this helps this is what I do Google fixes a ton of my problems 
and plugin organ organizer is going to fix another ton of my problems. It allows me to kind of just manipulate and and cut it all the way down till I find the one issue and and where it is. So again, guys, I hope this helps. I hope I I think this will be a great guide for you self-diagnosing your problems and coming to solutions with conflicting plugin issues. And uh, if you haven't smashed that nice red look and subscribe button, please do it. I would really appreciate it. it helps us grow the fam. And if you are interested in upgrading to Elementor Pro, I have so many videos about it. Be sure and check out the link down below in the description and you can get your hands on that amazing plugin. All right, guys, have a great day.